Welcome back to Jammin' in Their Repair. Uh, I've been doing more work on the Vespa, and we have a control flow issue with the handle there I plan on working on. I have uh, some engine repair I need to take care of, and the oil leak. So we're going to try and dive into that, and we're going to do timing on this engine. So... Uh, this might be a slightly long video. I'll try and keep it short, but uh, we're getting a lot of work done on the rest bus, so uh, We're going to start with the uh, Carburetor we got that reinstalled uh, But at this point in the video, I have not fixed the hole uh, In the gasket problem from the old video, so we're going to start kind of <laughs> jumping around in videos here, but we're going to go back in time a little bit and uh, deal with the gasket. Alright, got the carburetor reinstalled. See what happens here. Key on, says I'm in neutral. Um, I'm not going to open the chalk, I'm going to just leave it the way it is. Okay, maybe some chalk. All right, I'm going to uh, screw around with it a little bit here, and it runs, but it won't idle. It's very annoying, and it likes a little chunk. It's not a chunk. that carburetor that I can adjust to make it not do that. All the way in, all the way out, doesn't matter. Damn thing dies. So, and I figure that out. It sounds more like carburetor again. But then I have this problem. Yeah. See the oil? Come on, focus. See all the oil draining down out of here? See all that? That's not right. So, That is pure oil, so I gotta figure out where that oil is going or coming from. And solve that mystery. Yay. Take this air filter off again. Yeah, it's dripping from that oil uh, pump, all right. Tighten on, oh, screws are a little bit loose. <clears throat> Screw over there. 
don't know if I can get to. <coughs> Shoot. There is an idea a stubby screwdriver. Oh, nope. I put that together so loose. Why did that thing pump out the oil? Two screws out, two screws out, cleaned it up. Let's see if uh, she's still leaking oil anyhow. It might run. Almost idles and it dies. And I just don't know how to set the idle adjustment on this stupid thing. Without it just screwing back, but that doesn't change the idle at all. It's a mixture screw. So I'm missing something here. And I have to take it all back apart because the oil pump gasket is leaking like a sieve. So I gotta tear it all down again. So I'm not real happy about that. Um, let me get that done and I'll be right back. Okay, after a little bit of re-education here, I have discovered that this is your idle screw. And when you turn this, the slide, you can see the throttle slide here. It's supposed to open. And so now I go ahead and turn this all the way in. And that slide moves but just a fraction of a millimeter. So there's no idle adjustment with the screw, okay? 
Now, I had this all apart, and maybe I put the slide in upside down. I don't know if that's a possibility, but I have to go into this carburetor again and figure out why this is not adjusting the idle uh, properly. So without getting a good idle, I can't go ahead and move on to the air-fuel mixture screw. Okay, so I'm going to yank this thing out again, and I'm... I'm not going to record it because you've already seen it. Um, really, it's just the two 11 millimeter nuts, the fuel line, unhook the throttle, which you don't even have to do, that just lifts right out. And uh, uh, disconnect this line here and lift this whole thing out. There's two more screws underneath. So, nothing to it but to do it. The Vespa is putting up a pretty good fight. It doesn't want to run well. Making any adjustments to the carburetor doesn't change the performance at all. So, I'm going back to ignition. Because it ain't the carburetor and it's got to be ignition. And when I took this apart, I marked the uh, timing of the inner stator and uh, where it was while I took it apart. When I put it back together, I put it back together using the factory marks, okay? And you think factory marks is going to be good enough? Mm, maybe not. I don't know. So I'm going to take this back apart. I have to pull the flywheel off, adjust the timing plate. And there's a hundred videos on how to do this. What I'm doing is not the right way. I'm putting it back to where it was when I took it apart. And then I'm going to put it together and see if that runs. And if it does, uh, I'm probably half the camper. So, uh, you get about 35 degrees of adjustment in the stator. Okay, and you want to be at minus 24 degrees on this one. So, um... It's all going to be just guesswork because I'm not going to do the whole procedure. I'm going to pop it off, send it to where it used to once run, pull it back together, see how it does. Alright, so I'm going to just take this whole cover assembly off. I'm going to start by removing the spark plug just so it's easier to rotate. Um, take this plastic cover off, take the side cover off, pull the flywheel off. So... Uh, it shouldn't take too long. The only problem I foresee is finding my flywheel puller. <laughs> so, let's see how this goes. I need to pull a flywheel off of here, and uh, I had to look for my flywheel puller. And I know I have one somewhere, and I've been looking for about 
half hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> I can't find it anywhere. This is a direct result of me organizing my shop a little bit. So I'm over here, I'm looking, and wouldn't you know, on the shelf, right where it belongs. Now who thought to put that stuff and label them, I don't know. I spent way too much time looking for them in the wrong place. Dang it. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see what we have here. Bought this uh, off of Amazon. Uh, I don't know how much it was. Maybe I'll put a link in the description. And I'm pretty sure it's this big guy with a big hole. So you need to set you up in the stand here. So this had a pin that pops out. We we'll unscrew that. Goes down. Now when we wrench on this, it'll pull the uh, flywheel off of there. Ah, that'll work. Well, I've had this off before. It popped right off. Brother. There she goes. Hi, Karumba. strong magnets that feels like it's stuck on there. It's not. It's just a magnet. Now we get the timing issue. Alright. So you can see where I lined up the factory marks. You can see the red line was the mark before I disassembled the stator. So I'm simply going to put it back on the red line where it was when I took it apart. And see what happens. Doesn't need to be complicated, does it? I don't own a degree wheel. Hey, nope. Come on. Elmer, you can't just walk away. You gotta hang out with me. Damn dog. I love you too. So either help or it was an incredible waste of time. Um, turn this over, get the key to the top. Okay, let me take this out. Kind of 
washer. What you need to do is line up the keyway here. It's going to suck it on for you. This is not comfortable. Oh, you know what? I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> if anybody said we're a creature of habit, why the hell am I sitting on the floor? <sighs> so yeah, I'm going to jack it up. <laughs> well, the thing was, when we were kickstarting it, you know, you kind of have to have it down. There's an idea. Now that I'm halfway done with the work I was doing, let's reassemble. Good. Now I can get down in here and see what's going on. Maybe not slam my fingers in there. Let's look at it. See. see. Got it. Yeah, baby. Huh. I'll take a win. I gotta look up the torque on this nut, so I'll be back. So, I can run it briefly without the shroud on. To see if it runs any better. Uh, which means I gotta lower it back down. I also have to get the torque for that nut, so I'll be back. Alright, I need to torque my flywheel down to 24 foot pounds. Elmer, come in here. And, uh, but before I do that, I am going to. Try and find top dead center of this uh, piston and mark it on the flywheel here. I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. Put a school grower in here. Okay, so it feels like right there is top dead center. So I'm going to just mark that here. I'm going to go by this blade here. And mark it. So that's the feel like top dead center, okay? <clears throat> the, uh, there seems to be about that much of a area where the piston stops going up and starts going down, okay? The right way to do this, and you can watch as many videos about that as you want, this is not the right way to do it, is you put a uh, piston stop into the spark plug hole and you turn the piston until it hits and you mark that spot <clears throat> and then you go back the other way turn it till it hits and you mark that spot halfway in between is top dead center okay so that's the right way to do it I do not have a piston stop so I will not be doing it that way uh, and the main reason I'm doing it this way is simply curiosity. So, it's supposed to be, oh, i got to look it up again, 24 degrees before top dead center. So, uh, when I put my strobe light on here, 
this mark should appear over here somewhere. And if you measure that distance, I think it's uh, 1.4 millimeters per degree. So it's going to be about uh, 30 millimeters or so off of that. And again, this is not me trying to do this to time the bike. I'm, you saw how I did it. I'm just curious of where that mark's going to end up uh, when I'm done here. Uh, so that's all it is, curiosity. So, I was going to pull it all back together, but then I was thinking, you know, I should really, I should just really see what that does. The way I did top dead center is the way I was taught to do top dead center. You know, it's probably not as accurate as uh, um, the other way. So, whatever. Alright, so now I torque that down. So another wrong way to do things, jam a screwdriver in here, tighten it down, there you go, 24 foot pounds, good enough. Alright, let's see if it runs any better, if at all.
So this is what I have. The old spoon it yourself and save. Uh, Sears timing light. Craftsman timing light. I haven't used this thing in a hundred years. try and show you this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Where the timing mark ended up approximately right there. Uh, I'm a little off, I'm sure. So, in theory, if I measure from top dead center to that line, it should equal okay, Google 1.4 times 24. 1.4 times 24 is 33.6. Uh, 30. So this is the closest thing I have that I can use to measure this distance. And this is just nonsense, really. I'm going to guesstimate it around 49 millimeters. No, that's actually more than... Nope. About 49 millimeters. So I'm in the ballpark. I don't know. Seems to run fine. I'm going to just keep an eye on the thing. And uh, let's see what happens. I'm going to reassemble it and put some air in the tires. Take this bad boy up. Unfortunately, it's raining. So I can't even ride it today. Could, don't want to. So I'm gonna just reassemble it. Now <laughs> I could jack it back up. I'm gonna just sit on my stool here and put those screws in. It's not that hard for crying out loud. Not worth the effort of pumping the thing up. together. Um, covers and shrouds and wiring done. Let's turn it on. No choke. It's been, I don't know, 20 minutes since uh, 
I last started it and uh, let's see how it goes. I like it. And I'm blowing out some blue smoke in there. Uh, mostly probably because I have premix in the gas and the injector, so it's getting too much oil. Uh, once I verify the oil pump is lubricating properly, the next tank of gas will be just regular uh, alcohol free gas. And uh, let's see how that goes. This is my oil line. I'm going to pull my oil line off. Hold it up like this, you can't see it. But I'm letting the oil drip down. I'm going to pull it back on. I should see this flow. Right about here now. Oh, here, here. Get going. She's running all right. A little smoky yet. Got to do a break-in period on this motor. Get things seated. You know, new piston rings and everything. So, I'm going to change my attention a little bit and put some air in the tires. Alright, so the spare tire is flat. Unfortunately, I mounted it with the valve stem pointing that way. So I have to take the tire off and turn it around so I can put some air in it. I now know why I put it on that way. That's kind of a shitty design. Huh. It doesn't quit this way. You have to put it on the other way. So you gotta take the spare tire off to just check the air pressure. Wow. Come on, Best Buy. I wonder if Vespa mounted this tire or if somebody else previously owned the scooter and mounted it wrong. Happy slappy. Alright. Tis good.
wonderful. Like brand new. Alright, let's see if I can fix that mirror. I think that'll work. Alright. Alright, starting to come together here. Really bummer that it's raining outside. Sure love to jump on this thing and take it for a ride. But uh, we're going to end the video here for today. Tomorrow it's supposed to be nice. I'll take it for a ride, first ride tomorrow. So we'll be right back. All right, quick start. Here we go. No choke. No effort. Now that runs water. Nice. All right, seems to be running well enough. Actually, gonna put the side covers on and uh, take it for a test drive. The rain is gonna stop pretty soon here, so I figure I'll do this. the tail lights and the turn signals and you have to have these covers on to do that. You have to come down and put it down and then let it do there's a spring here that has to catch. So. Now it's a tight seal here. Good. Alright, let's turn the key on. Got me running for headlights. Right turn, right turn, left turn, left turn, uh, belt. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now I need just needed it to stop raining for crying out loud. All right, still a little bit wet out there, so we'll have to see how this goes. All right, here we go.
there you go. Uh, I drove about three miles or so, and uh, a little bit disappointed. Bummer. Top speed, 50 miles an hour. Didn't want to go above 50 miles an hour. I thought the top speed on this was going to be closer to 70. And it seems like it's got plenty of power. One, two, three, boom, you're up to 45 miles an hour. And then you hit fourth gear, and it's just a dog. I mean, just bleh, you know, nothing, no power there, no increase in speed, and nothing. So, maybe I still don't have her tuned up right. I don't know. I have to do some research. That's where I'm going to leave the video for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, I didn't do a helmet cam because my camera broke. So I can't mount my camera to my helmet right now. So when, I, when I get that fixed, I'll uh, do a video, riding ride-along video. If you have any ideas why this thing just doesn't want to perform above 50 miles an hour, let me know. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Ring the bell. I appreciate that. And uh, I really appreciate a subscription. So uh, have a good day. Bye-bye. After doing some research, I discovered that the Vespa speedometers are very, very, very off. <laughs> they are not accurate at all. So this is a snapshot of my cell phone uh, speedometer app, clearly showing I got up to 63 miles an hour. I know my speedometer never hit 55 miles an hour, so it's off by at least 11 miles an hour. So I'm going, going to have to look into what's going on with this, and I have not addressed the oil leak in this video because when I made the video, I was unaware of an oil leak. So, uh, next week's video will be me fixing the oil leak and fixing the petcock uh, valve to turn the gas on and off and doing some other repairs on this Vespa. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Oh, we're going to add a special little clip at the end of this video for just one viewer. I had a viewer ask how the paint is holding up on the rims I painted uh, about a year ago. Um, I don't know, a year and a half ago. So this is the front wheel. I did not paint the front wheels. So you can see there's still all sorts of uh, road rash on here and it's all discolored. Okay. So I did not wash these before I made this video. So they are what they are. Okay. So here's the painted rim. All right. So they're dirty. Okay. I did not wash them. But as far as the paint goes, I think the paint is holding up pretty good. And if I went in there with a brush, I think uh, they would clean up pretty nicely. So thanks for reminding me I need to paint my other wheels. <laughs> so Hopefully this uh, helps you out. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Bye-bye. Are you done? Knock the shit off, honey. <laughs>